Hi there and welcome to today's video in which we continue our series on computer literacy. I hope you're enjoying it thus far. Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at output devices. So in our previous video, we looked at input devices. In other words, devices that give instructions to the PC. Today, we are going to be looking at output devices. These are the are devices that actually bring something out of the PC. So with input, we spoke about, you know, using our mouse and our keyboard to give instructions. We are typing, you know, uh, documents or so on. We give those instructions into the PC and then we get the results out onto our screen, on, you know, out of our printer, things like that. So all the devices that bring something out to us, those are output devices. But let's get into today's video. So today we're going to be talking about output devices. Not a very long module. But um, these are just some of the things that we are going to focus on. In our previous video, we looked at input, right, and input devices. Now we're talking about output devices. So remember, an output device is anything that brings something out to us as users. So our monitor, our printer, our speakers, anything coming out of the PC to us, that becomes an output device. So here yeah, they tell us, output is what the computer produces as the result of processing. Remember what is processing? Processing is when we are putting things into the PC. So me typing on my keyboard, using my mouse, you know, doing some editing. The results of that comes out onto my screen or out of my printer. And that's why it is output. So there we have a few examples. Our, our screen, uh, our speakers and our printer. Those are all examples of output devices. So let's look at the first one, our monitor. When they tell you, and this relates to a monitor and to a TV, if they tell you that it's a 32-inch TV, well, how are they measuring that? There you can see on the screen, they are measuring from the top corner diagonally over to the other corner in inches. That is how they determine the size. So if it's a 65-inch TV, it means from that corner all the way down to that one over there, it is 65 inches um, in length. So that's how our size is determined. So when you go and buy a TV, obviously that's one of the things you look for, the monitors as well. The other is your resolution. So this relates to the quality. Now, what you need to understand is that there are pixels that make up this image on your monitor. They are little dots that represent each and every color that you can have on your screen. So the more dots you have on the screen or the more pixels you have, the clearer the image is going to be. If we look at this number over here, 192 by 1080, Right? It's telling you the number of pixels, you know, from left to right and to top and bottom, um, you know, per square inch on the actual monitor. So the higher that number, the better the quality of this, the um, uh, image on the screen is going to be. Okay. Now we also have graphics cards. So our graphics card in the PC is what actually gives us the image. Remember, we, we have the monitor, but that monitor needs to be connected to our computer okay what it connects to is known as a graphics card this is the physical card that gives um, a picture to that monitor okay this is why they tell us the image is generated by specialized circuitry known as the graphics card now for those who play games um you know those who do like video editing and things like that you get more high-end graphics cards so it means it can do a lot more to give better graphics like I mentioned, for tasks like video editing and playing games. And these cards, uh, most of them are built into the, the laptops and into the motherboards of uh, computers. But when you go into gaming and video editing, you need you know a separate one. And these can be thousands of rands uh, in cost. Some of the other things on your monitor to take note of are things like your response time. They tell us here it's the time it takes to change a pixel from one color to another. This is measured in milliseconds. So the quicker it can do that, the better it's going to be in terms of the image changing from like, you know, one color to another, um, especially when you're dealing with, you know, like watching movies or stuff like that. Um, that is something to look for. So already we know when we, even when we go and buy a laptop, when we go and, you know, buy a monitor, when we go and buy a TV, we want to look at things like the resolution, the size, we want to look at the response time. Um, we want to look at the, the ways in which you can connect to it. In the past, TVs were just TVs. Now TVs have HDMI ports on them where we can connect um, you know, another device to it. We can connect a laptop to it, a computer to it. 
Some of them have the old VGA connectors. Some have display ports. Some have thunder ports. Some you can connect, you know, USB flash drives into them as well. Some are, you're able to connect it via USB. So there are a lot of things to look for. Just a point, if you are going to be buying a TV uh, that has a USB port, you want to ask them, can you watch movies with that? Because there are some TVs with a USB port that it doesn't allow you to watch movies. It will only pick up uh, music. Okay, so that is uh, something just to look for. All right, then we have our printers. So there's two main types of printers. The one is an inkjet printer. So there's a picture of it, and what it does is it sprays dots of ink onto the page. It's cheap to buy. It is expensive to run because you're looking at about 50 to, six, 50 to 100 pages, probably around there, before you need to replace those ink cartridges. Right? It gives you good quality color prints. You can print in black and white as well, but it is going to be slower than your laser printer. Okay, so this is why when you go and buy an inkjet printer, they're between, let's say, between five and 800 Rand. You can get decent printers. Um, and some of them allow you to scan and copy as well. Okay, those are our multifunction printers because they can do more than just print. Then we have our laser printers. These work like photocopy machines. They are a lot bigger. They are more expensive. But in the long run, if you print in large volumes, it is cheaper. So a laser... Um, where an, an inkjet will give you, let's say, 50 to 100 pages before the ink needs to be replaced. Your laser, you're looking at maybe a thousand pages um, before that toner, and it's not ink now, it's now toner, that uh, needs to be replaced. It's also faster than our inkjet. So um, those are just the major differences. Also, your laser generally can only print in black and white. A color laser is a specialized machine that's even more expensive than your laser printer. So that you usually find in like printing shops. But if you're going to, again, it, it all depends what you're going to be printing. If you're going to be printing, you know, pictures and things like that, you will go inkjet. If it's just documents and large amount of documents, you will go with a laser. Okay. These printers connect through, and we've, we've looked at these ports already, through USB ports. Okay. There they show us. They over there. This is what they look like. There's two connected there. There's another open port over there. This is where we connect our screen. That's our VGA port, and this is for our network. So uh, most printers, in fact, most external devices connect via USB. And then also on your computer, and this is something we will go through, um, when you see this little green dot over a printer, that's showing you that that is the default printer, but that's something we will go through um, at a later stage. Okay, so what is the purpose of output? Well, the purpose of output is to provide the user with feedback okay they want to give the user feedback um, with the interaction with the computing device they are using so imagine typing on your computer you're typing out a document but you can't see what you're doing so the screen gives us feedback okay that's all they're really saying there provide the user with a more permanent or non-electronic copy of the results in other words all it's saying is that as we type in we can see what we type in on the screen and it's not permanent because we don't have to save it. We, you know, we can delete it, anything like that. And it allows us the transmission of data between computers and electronic devices, which means I can send it to somebody else, you know, all of that type of thing. So that's just the purpose of output. You do get different types of output. You get visual output. And if you've ever heard people talk about the term soft copy, this is when we're looking at a document on the screen. But when a document is printed or anything is printed out of the printer and you can touch it, that is known as our hard copy. Sound output is like our speakers. Touch output is like our joysticks, um, mobile devices. And then we have other forms of output um, as well. So that we, we, we're just going to touch on a few of them. Our display devices. There is a projector. Now, a projector allows a computer or computing device to show people what's on their screen as well. And they can change it at any time. So when I'm in class and I display what's on my computer um, up on the projector. I can change things on my computer, and it will change what's shown on the projector. Some limitations when it comes to a projector is the quality of the size or the quality related to the size, because the larger you make an image on a projector, um, the, the worse the image really becomes, okay? Because then it's not as clear anymore. 
and the size of the projector can limit its portability especially when you're talking about big you know 3d projectors can become a bit of a problem how are display devices used well display options or you are given display options that allow the user to make choices or interact with the program and operating system and display the results of processing that has taken place that's exactly what we spoke about before where you can decide what you want to display on your screen you can decide what you want to um you know throw up onto the projector because there'll be times where you have something on your screen on your um, computer or laptop and something different showing out of the projector that's all they really say then again with our monitor we spoke about the resolution okay um, the aspect ratio is something else you need to take into consideration as well this refers to the, to the relationship between the width and height of the screen so aspect ratio is like when you look at this screen you can see it's wider than it is high okay the the width uh, is much larger than the height so this would typically be your 16 by 9 so when they talk about widescreen that's what they're talking about with the aspect ratio your old tvs um they were letterbox um four by three aspect ratio okay the contrast ratio refers to the difference between the darkest black and the whitest white so again that number is very high it means you're going to have a very good contrast ratio and then we did talk about response time so people when you are buying monitors and you're buying tvs and things like that you need to bear these um, options in mind right ask these questions and then we know about the screen size there are also interactive whiteboards um, this allows us to display an image onto a white onto a, a board and we can effectively interact with what's on the screen on that board it allows me to like make notes on it and to save things in it um, and it will save it onto my computer as well so very very nice tool uh, especially for for teaching lecturing you know things like that okay so folks that's it for output that's that's all we really need to know um, to cover the basics of what output devices are remember output devices bring the results of what we've done on the computer out to us whether it's on the screen whether it's listening to music printing something um, those are all forms of output